What's up, everybody? Happy Monday night. Hope you all had a great day so far. Hope you have a great night. Um, Grand Hotel, Season 1, Episode 10, Sweet Little Lies. This episode was amazing. <laughs> this episode, listen, I'm loving this show. I say it every video, but I'm loving it. That's how good this show is. It's amazing. Amazing. Every episode, you learn something new. Everybody has some secrets, some lies, and they're coming up to the surface. And I'm loving it. Um, like I said, every character on the show, pretty much almost every character, I would say you should not really trust. Not really. No. Um, first of all, Alicia. Wow. She got hit with so much information tonight. So much info she got hit with. My goodness. It was just crazy. Danny found himself in a very bad situation today. <laughs> very bad. Like, it was crazy how Alicia befriended Heather, Danny's girlfriend, ex-girlfriend. And they didn't even know who each other was, obviously. And it was crazy. So, you know, Heather obviously, you know, she's sitting there telling Alicia all about her relationship and how, you know, the guy told her it was complicated. And Alicia could relate because Danny told her that previously. Um, so they're just sitting there talking, getting to know each other, laughing. It was crazy awkward. Like I was sitting there watching it and I'm like, this is awkward. So she ends up going into Heather's hotel suite because Heather was going to cancel her reservation because of what Danny told her. Basically, Danny was like, we're done. We're not together no more. So she was going to cancel her reservation. But there was a cancellation fee that was pretty expensive that she couldn't afford. Um, so Alicia decided to waive the fee. And she decided to, you know, set up a little romance in Heather's room for her and her boyfriend. Danny came up in a room. And he didn't even know who room it was until Alicia told him that it was some girl. You know, you should hear about her story. She just flew in from Illinois. Soon as she said Illinois, Danny's face said, because <laughs> he knew exactly who she was talking about. So he tried to sneak over and check the name on the bag on the luggage. And of course, it was Heather. He was like, OK, we need to get out of there because he was like, let's get out of here. He was trying to get out of here for Heather came back. Heather came back and caught the two of them together. And that's when they realized they were both dating the same dude. I was like, awkward. Um, and of course, Alicia was pissed. She wanted nothing to do with Danny at all. She wanted no parts of Danny. Told him to leave her alone. Don't follow her. Don't talk to her. Like, leave her alone. And of course, you know, he tried to talk to Heather. I felt extremely bad for both of those women. Especially Heather. Because she's been there for Danny support him through his whole mission to find sky and this is how he treats her you know like you broke up with her over the phone dude who does that over the phone you know how trifling that is to break up with somebody that you've been dating for quite some time over the phone that's that's pretty jacked up um so basically he was also hoping that heather wouldn't tell his secret about why he was really there and you know Alicia, of course, came and asked Heather, what other secrets are Danny hiding? Like, is there any more that he's keeping from me? And, you know, she decided to not divulge that information for Danny's sake. You know, she decided not to do it. She decided to hold on to his secret. And what got Alicia into questioning Heather about Danny was the fact that, you know, she was all down and depressed. And Mrs. P was like, why are you so depressed? So when she was like, oh, Danny been keeping secret, Mrs. P was like, mm. <laughs> which gave off a telling, you know, basically Alicia picked up that, OK, you know something. So tell me what's up. So she basically told her how Danny fudged his entire resume. His entire resume was fake. And they were trying to figure out why would he fake an entire resume for a waiter job. So now they're trying to put the pieces together because something, something in the milk ain't clean. Um, I like 
the whole Danny working with the detective situation because with him on the inside and her on the outside, it's working to their benefit. You know what I mean? And I like it because they're trying to solve this sky situation. Um, and with the two of them working together, they getting closer and closer to figuring things out. But Danny decided to be all in when it comes to Alicia. So he decided to unburden himself to her and tell the whole truth. When he was getting ready to tell her the truth, I had a feeling somebody was going to knock on the door or interrupt or something like that. But no, he told her the whole truth about why he was really there. Sky is really his sister. Mateo was paying off the cops to shut the investigation down. Her father is somehow involved with dangerous people that might have had something to do with her disappearance. The look on Alicia's face when he was telling her all this info, she was looking like she was just dumbfounded. It was like she was trying to process all this information about Mateo, about his sister, about her father. Like she was trying to process all of this at once. I felt bad for Alicia. Like you could tell she really cared about Danny, but he pushed her to her breaking point tonight. Like he really did because all these lies, like everything, she just feels like their entire interaction since day one has been nothing but a lie. So I don't blame her for being pissed. And of course, she dropped the bomb on him after he done told her all of this. She basically told him two little words. You're fired. I'm not even shocked that she fired him. I'm not surprised. I'm not shocked. Not at all. And in my opinion, he deserved it. I understand you're there to look for your sister. And even Heather said it. She don't feel like his sister, there's a big chance that Sky might not even be alive, which is true. I mean, it has been months. There's no guarantee that she's alive. So anyway, moving on from that, it was a hot mess. <laughs> Javi's back from rehab. I was like, damn, that was some quick rehab. I'm like, it felt like he was only there for a day. How much time passed? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, he got up, you know, fairly quick. I was like, y'all sure he going to be clean this time? Because that was a little quick rehab stint. You would think he would be there for at least 90 days. At the very least. Um, but it was good to see Javi, though. Javi was in rare form today. I love this, this, the scenes with him and Jason. They were hilarious. Because you know Javi. He's a hoe. And there was a bachelorette party or whatever, you know, a bunch of bride, you know, a bride and a bridesmaid, you know, like a little bachelorette get together. When he found out all them girls was cheerleaders and he looked at him and he looked at them girls, Javi was like, damn, Javi is a whore. He ain't learned nothing. <laughs> I, I swear, Javi, out of all these characters, Javi, I would have to say, is one of my favorites out of all of them. He's my favorite. Javi has his issues and stuff, but today he was hilarious. He was in rare form. Javi, man. And he was trying to, you know, there was a girl from the bachelorette party that was trying to flirt with Jason and stuff. Jason was not giving that girl the time of day. Jason was not trying to talk to her. He was trying to be professional and nice. And you know what I'm saying? Because you know how Jason is. He polite. He nice, you know, to an extent, you know, he doesn't mix business with pleasure and all that. But he was not giving that girl was fine. I was like, what is Jason thing? Even Javi was looking at him like, bro, what is you doing, bro? Um, and he kept trying to get Javi, you know, Javi kept trying to get Jason to talk to the girl and he just kept blowing her off. And I'm glad Javi finally told Jason. He was like, bro, ain't nobody buying that little goody, goody, goody two shoes routine that you put on. He was like, you ain't got no edge to you. <laughs> he said, you ain't got no swagger. As bad as it was, I say, listen, as funny as it was, it was the truth. Jason, listen, I understand he's a good guy and all that, and I appreciate that. I respect that. But he needs to stop being so stiff. Like, bro, loosen up. Have some fun. Like, you don't need to be no Javi 2.0 or nothing, but damn, let loose a little bit. You know what I'm saying? But I understand, you know, he want to be professional and not sleep with the guests. I get it. You know, you don't want to be like Javi sleeping around with the guests. But loosen up for once. I mean, at least once, just have some fun. You know what I mean? This girl is obviously feeling you. Do it once at the very least. You know what I'm saying? So he finally loosened up and talked to the girl. And, um, you know, they slept together. And, of course, he got caught by um, Ingrid. 
I could tell Ingrid was a little jealous. I could see it all over her face. She was a little jealous. I said, well, you know, I mean, she could still get with Jason. He ain't move, you know, it ain't like him and that girl dating. It was just, you know, a little, you know, mess around in the hay. That's all it was. A little roll around in the hay. That's all it was. Chill out. I did like her scenes with Javi and stuff like that, even though it was a little awkward and weird. But at least Javi cared enough to ask how she doing and stuff, you know. Um... Mateo was so cold though towards her like he asked how she doing when she came in his office to take out the trash and stuff like he asked her how she doing but he got cold with her like when she wanted to you know let him know that she just wanted to be friends with him and stuff he was like no we're not friends we're co-workers I said oh all right okay rude I was like oh all right now we're just friends he said we're just co-workers I was like I cannot wait and I hope to God that Ingrid finds out that um, Mateo was the one who rigged that um, balcony at the fan hotel to fall. I hope I hope she finds out that Mateo is the reason your baby's dead. I hope she really finds out about it. I loved her scenes with Mrs. P though. Like where she was trying to get reassigned from um, she didn't want to work on um, the 14th floor because that's Javi's floor. So she didn't want to work on that floor. And she didn't want to work on the executive suite, which is where the offices are, because she had to work at Mateo's office, taking out trash and cleaning. Mrs. P was looking at her like, damn, do you have a problem? Like, OK, what floor don't you have a problem with? <laughs> I don't blame Mrs. P. I don't blame Mrs. P. Mrs. P was like, look, girl, <laughs> she, Mrs. P was so over Ingrid and her drama. I don't blame Mrs. P though, but Mrs. P let her know. She gave her some sound advice and she let Ingrid know. Make better life choices. Simple. I agree with Mrs. P. It's time for Ingrid to grow up, make better life choices. Because it's like, you know, the choices that you made so far done got you in some hot water. And you need to, you know, focus on some other things. Make better, wiser decisions, mature decisions. Think. Um. So anyway... Moving on from that, Marissa and Yoli, I like they scenes together um, because Yoli wanted Marissa to basically leave the country with her, Carolina, and their father, Felix. Marissa was not having it. Marissa was like, I'm not leaving no country. You know, she was like, at first, she was coming up with excuses because Marissa, she came up with so many excuses because she tried to make it seem like... She didn't want to leave the country with a felon, you know, somebody who's wanted and stuff, you know, a fugitive and all that. But the reality of the situation was when she was a kid, you know, she's from Colombia. And when they left Colombia, they never, you know, got the proper paperwork to come to the United States. So basically, she's undocumented. She's illegal. She's here illegally. That's why she felt if she left the country, she would never be able to come back. You know what I mean? I felt bad for her. I really did. Especially in the time that we're in now with all that's going on with our current president. You know, so I'm glad that they touched on that. You know what I mean? I like Yoli and, and uh, Marissa together. I like them. So, drama is ensuing with the Mendoza family. Teresa is not playing no games. Mateo was extra cocky in this episode. Like, he was all Team Teresa this episode. Before, you know, he sympathized with Santiago. It seemed like he was loyal. He was starting to get some loyalty for Santiago. But after he done got beat down last week and thrown down them stairs <laughs> by Teresa people. Because, you know, Teresa sent some guy last week to beat him up, throw him down the stairs. <laughs> so... Now that, you know, now after he, he done got that wake up call from Teresa, now he want to start getting some act right. He want to start, you know, showing more loyalty towards Teresa. Teresa, is, I like her. Katie Seagal, I swear I love Katie Seagal. I love her. Is it Seagal or Seagal? I think it's Seagal is how you pronounce her name. Um, But I love her. I told you, I've been a fan of hers ever since Married with Children, Futurama, um... Sons of Anarchy, like I've just been a huge fan of Katie. Eight Simple Rules, you know, the sitcom that she did with John Ritter, the late John Ritter, rest in peace. I love her. Like she's just an amazing actress 
And when she plays these types of roles like a badass character, I love it even more. Teresa is nothing to play with. And she proved that today. She's not to be toyed with. So she basically got Mateo to let him, to let her inside of Santiago and Gigi's um, room and to their penthouse suite. Santiago was pissed. He was like, this is my home. She was like, OK, you surprised me last week by popping up at my office. So I'm going to surprise you this week. <laughs> I like how she just didn't care. So basically, she um, Mateo told her how Felix is staying at the hotel. Felix stole, uh, everybody know Felix stole millions of dollars. And she basically told Santiago if he turns over Felix to her, she'll forgive his entire debt that he owes her. She'll be out of his life if he hands over Felix. Because Felix knows where that money is. He know where that missing money is, those millions of dollars he stole. He know where that money is. Um, that's why she won him. Because she was like, basically, he she could make a profit. She could not only make back the money that Santiago uh, owes her, but she could make way more. Because Felix is worth more to her, you know, than what Santiago owes her because of the millions that Felix has. I don't blame Santiago for contemplating that little deal, you know, that little proposal. I don't blame him. I would have contemplated it, too. I mean, you could get this dangerous woman, these dangerous people out of your life. You can get Mateo out of your life. You know what I'm saying? You get all these criminals out your life. You, you know, your hotel will be free and clear of debt, you know, at least to the mafia. You know, I would take that offer. <laughs> you know what I mean? But he had to weigh all the other options, though, because if he did that, if Gigi ever found out about it, that marriage would be done completely. Her kids would hate him. She would hate him for doing it. It would be done because he already found out Felix was there because um, Felix stupid self was stealing cart, uh, stealing stuff off the cart when um, Ingrid was in the hallway and stuff off her little cart. So she had ran to Mrs. P and told Mrs. P it was some funny business going on in that room. And that room has been shut down for years. Ain't nobody ever been in that room. So, of course, Mateo and Santiago went up there and caught him. Um... It was just a whole hot mess. And Teresa, you know, Mateo was showing Teresa around the hotel and stuff. And they stumbled into Mrs. P office. And Mrs. P was nice and gracious when she met her. But when she heard that she was the investor of the hotel, Mrs. P automatically became stone faced because she know investor means that these are the people, the dangerous people Mateo was telling her about that invested money into the hotel. So she automatically was like, yeah, she went on defensive quick. She was like, okay, well, we got work to do. And Jason was in her office and stuff and introduced himself to Teresa and all that. And I'm glad Mrs. P told Jason, stay away from that woman. She was like, she's dangerous. Stay away from her. So while they was at the bar, Teresa was at the bar sipping her drink. And she was telling Jason how good the, uh, the Pinot was. I think it was Pinot Grigio. That she was drinking. Um, so she gave him a hundred dollar tip and he wasn't going to accept it. But, you know, Danny was like, are you crazy? You better take that money. And that's when, you know, he was basically telling her how, you know, the woman might be dangerous or whatever. So that's when Danny took a picture of Teresa and showed it to the detective. And the detective was like, yeah, she a businesswoman, but there's rumors that she runs a major organization, criminal organization that deals with kidnapping and fraud and murder, all that type of stuff. Um, and he thought maybe Teresa and her organization had his sister kidnapped. See, this is my issue with Dandy in this investigation. Every time he gets a new piece of evidence or a new lead, he thinks it points to that person. He's like, oh, no, this person definitely did it. It's so many moving pieces to this puzzle. You don't know who, you know, caused your sister's disappearance. You can't know that. You have circumstantial evidence. You don't know if these people had something to do with it. You don't know. Um, Felix was definitely laying it on thick. When Santiago came to see him, Santiago was like, bruh, just tell me where the money at. He, Felix claimed he don't know where the money is. I know he lying. He know where that money at. You mean tell me you don't know where millions of dollars that you stole 
magically disappeared. You don't have a clue of where it is. Gigi and all them might believe that, but it ain't no way. I don't even believe that nonsense. How you don't know where millions of dollars went? So it just all went missing? Yeah, okay. Um, so now they start talking about how Santiago called the feds on him to get him out the way to get at um Gigi. Santiago, of course, was denying it. He was like, that's not true. And Felix wasn't believing it. So now Felix started getting under Santiago's skin about Beatrice and how she really died. He was like a young woman like that. She ain't dying of no heart attack. So that started making Santiago pissed off because he was implying Santiago had something to do with his wife's death. So Santiago, of course, threw his face up against the wall, bust his old head open, had a cut on his head. I said, hmm. So, you mean to tell me Santiago has something to do with Beatrice? I wouldn't put it past Santiago. See, Santiago is more gangster than he want to believe he is. Even Teresa told him that last week, how he was judging her and her people and stuff like that. She was like, you ain't no different than we are. You a thug just like we are. <laughs> I said, exactly. He's a thug. Don't try to act like you're not. Um, but he was definitely, Felix was laying it on thick with um, Gigi, though. Leaving out certain parts of the story. About why um, Santiago attacked him and stuff like that. But he asked her basically to come with him out the country. And he asked her one simple question. He asked Gigi one simple question. Are you happy in your marriage? And that's the one question Gigi refused to answer. She ain't answer that question. I say, yep, she not happy in that marriage. And then, of course, she confronted Santiago because he threatened to turn Felix over to Teresa and all that. And now Santiago claiming, no, I was, it was an empty threat. It wasn't no empty threat. Stop that damn line. Stop that line. It wasn't empty. It was not no empty threat. So now he done woke up in bed all by himself and, to, and Gigi was gone. Gigi was out. Bags packed. She was, they was, she was taking um, Felix, I guess, to the marina or whatever to get him out of there in a boat. I have a feeling she may go with him. She might. She might go with him. But um, anyway, Teresa, like I said, she's not playing no game. She basically told Santiago since Felix got away and she's not going to get that money. She was like, well, it looks like I'm staying at the hotel. She was like, I don't fell in love with this hotel. <laughs> and now she demanded an office at the hotel. I said, oh, damn. Mm -mm -mm. And he said, talking about, oh, that's not going to that's not going to be possible. Teresa looked at him and was like, oh, you thought that was a request? <laughs> I was like, that ain't no damn request. That's a demand. She's telling you she's getting an office at your hotel. That wasn't asking. She wasn't asking for permission. What do you think this is? Santiago really has no clue. And Mateo keep telling him, you have no clue who you're dealing with. Teresa is no joke. Stop playing. And Mateo ought to know. She done threw his ass down the stairs. So you know she ain't playing with you. You better get it together. She, that woman ain't playing. Had him all up in trunks of cars and stuff. That woman ain't playing. <laughs> That woman ain't no joke, and I freaking love it, too. I love Teresa. She ain't got time for the games, and I'm here for it. But um, anyway, that was pretty much the whole episode. Um, Hit the comment section. Let me know what y'all thought about this week's episode. And I will see y'all all later. Hope you have a wonderful night. Peace.